pedestrians and cyclists. So what we're looking to provide here is a five foot bike lanes. And that's gonna be, a, there's gonna be a buffer, a five foot buffer that separates the bike lanes from, from the motorists on the travel lanes. With us now on the roadway, we, we also end up with a decent amount of green space on, the, on one side of the road. And we'll get into that a little later as to where that green space is. But uh, you know, as part of the, the charge from the, you know, through the towns is whenever it is an opportunity for us to you know, get, you know, lower the amount of runoff from stormwater, we should find a way to do that. So we're looking as part of this project, how can we incorporate um, what we call low impact development? And essentially what it really means is that how can we reduce stormwater runoff um, as part of this project? We will be replacing all the existing curbing and, and replacing those with granite curbing. All the existing catch basins will be replaced with new structures. We'll also be installed a few structures throughout the project. At the intersection of Victoria Road and Franklin Avenue, we will be installing new ped pedestrian buttons to provide AD access. Um, also, at each intersection, we will be reconstructing, re reconstructing the sidewalk ramps. The uh, roadway, uh, the reduction of the road across section, um, we also will be shortening the crossing distance for pedestrians. Um, and also, the, there's a median in the roadway, so we'll have a refuge island. So, if someone is crossing that roadway, there's an opportunity to wait um, if there's oncoming traffic. As we mentioned before, um, the town received uh, funding for um, lighting, so we'll be installing street lighting throughout the project. And finally, with the roadway will be milled and overlaid as part of um, this project. So there is the next, as part of the investigation, we uh, determined that um, this roadway, there's a concrete base below the, the existing pavement. So the road will be milled down to the concrete pavement and overlay with new asphalt. The center island and trees will remain in place. Um, we will not be replacing those trees. So here's just a, a graphical illustration um, of what we'll be doing as part of our improvement. So if you can imagine you're standing on Jordan Lane and you're looking north, north towards Hartford, you're standing at median looking towards, north towards Hartford. So we're starting from left to right. So the existing sidewalk, we, we, what we have labeled here says it's the existing sidewalk to remain. The goal is for that to remain in place. But what we're doing is we're going to be replacing that snow shelf, um, installing new curbing. Um, we're striping that road to provide a five foot wide bike lane, a five foot buffer, 11 foot travel lane. The median will remain in place. And essentially, mirroring what we've done in, on this side of the road on the northbound side over here by providing 11 foot wide travel lanes a five foot buffer and five foot bike lane. And again, restoring that grass strip um, between the curb and the existing sidewalk. So here's a planned view of um, the improvements. So you can think about the entire project limits. We're kind of slicing that up into pieces so we can zoom in and kind of see what the improvements are. So again, um, starting at Jordan Lane to the south. Um, so we're working our way from Jordan Lane to the left here towards the city of Hartford on, to your right. So what we, if I start from the top of the screen here, what we're showing is that the driveway aprons will be replaced, will replace the existing snow shelf. And then as we, this kind of dark um, line you see here, that's the curb we plan to replace. So the striping, the symbol here is a bike lane, our bike lane striping that shows, we're providing a five foot wide bike lane, five foot buffer, 11 foot traveling, this is a median that's gonna remain in place. We're installing lighting, this red symbol you see here, that's the lighting that we're planning to install as part of this project. So this is northbound, we'll provide the same conf lane configuration as we do southbound with 11 foot traveling, five foot buffer, five foot bike lane. And as you can see here, we actually, the, the roadway narrowing is gonna occur on this side of the road. So you can see that we have considerable amount of green space, which will certainly help with reducing stormwater runoff um, which is, you know, a goal of the town, uh, the, this project is to reduce some water runoff where we can. At each intersection, we're going to be replacing these, uh, what we show in orange here, that's your um, um, sidewalk ramps, which will provide uninterrupt uninterrupted access um, through these um, sidewalks um, going from north to south and south to north. 
So currently under, under existing conditions, right, this is right here is this uh, park and ride um, at this location here where I have my mouse shown here. So CT Transit, CT Transit currently uses this section right here as layover area for their buses. As part of this project, in coordination with CT Transit, we're going to be relocating those buses to a designated pull-off area, as we show right here, um, in this area right here. So if I move over to my next slide, it's just a continuation of the project that we'll be showing, is that that bus pull-off area, area kind of ends just before the entrance to the, to the um, park and ride in here. I'm sorry, to the Department of um, uh, this is the Department of Labor, I'm sorry, right in here. And it, again, it, the cross-section continues to be similar where we're providing bike lanes, um, a, a buffer, and one, one traveling in each direction. And also we'll be providing, you know, ADA ramps at each uh, of these intersections. So as part of, you know, we look at, we I've been talking about stormwater runoff and how we can reduce that in some of these areas. One of the things we're looking at at these bus pull-off areas that we're showing here, actually providing not just bus pull-off areas in the northbound direction, but also in the southbound direction. I just want to mention that. At these bus pull-off areas, what we're looking to do is, could we provide some type of a pervious pavement where instead of having strong water runoff, you know, water could infiltrate the ground and essentially recharge the groundwater uh, within, within the project area. Also, one of the things we're looking at is, just before each of what this uh, kind of dark symbol you see which um, hovering over here, that's a catch basin, which is you know one of those structures you see at the end of the road that water runs into it and into a storm system. Is that what if we could also find a way to, you know, as this water flows down this gutter, is there a way for us to treat our water and kind of get it back into the, the uh, treat our water just before it enters the catch basin? And provide some type of treatment for our storm water runoff. So, this that's one of the things we're looking at currently as part of our design is is you know ways of really not just focusing on a roadway reconstruction, but also you know thinking about storm water, thinking about you know multi mode multi modal use of this roadway as part of this project. So the continue north, um, essentially, it's, you know, it's really the same cross section we're showing here, all the way north and to the to the very right here, we have uh, Victoria um, Road. This is the intersection. So this project crosses over into Hartford. And this is Victoria Road um, at this intersection. This is a signalized intersection. So what we'll be providing here is our um, pedestrian button. So a pedestrian yeah, is crossing here. They'll be able to press that button and cross um, this location safely. So I, I spent a little time talking about, you know, what we call low impact development. And it's just really a way for us to, you know, either, either we, we try to reduce runoff or, or treat that runoff so that when the water eventually gets to the waterways and essentially Long Island Sound, that water would be, you know, clean enough that we're not affecting wildlife. So one of the things we're considering is a, as for, I talked about just before the catch basin is that this is a bias well. It looks just like a little a tree planting bed, but it's more than that. It's actually a functional filtration bed. So if you can bear with me here, if you imagine water running from right to left along the gutter. So that, what this provides is that the water runs from right to left, it diverts into this bed and then, you know, roots, the plant roots, and, and it is actually, this is the detail that we show here. So this is like a filtration bed. So that would filter that water and any water that doesn't, you know, percolates through the ground actually gets diverted back out through the slot and into the catch basin. So it's one way for us to, you know, in an aesthetically pleasing way is for us to actually have these features showing up along the roadside, not, not just supporting wildlife by, you know, with bees and birds, but also providing a function to treat stormwater runoff. As we talked about to at the, I'm sorry, let me go back to this one here, at a bus stop, um, areas, we're looking at um, some type of a porous pavement. And to the naked eye, it might just look like a pavement. But if you take a closer look, what you might see is a very open graded type of um, material. And that is just really, you know, for infiltration of that water through the ground. You know, the way this road is graded, any water that does not infiltrate will kind of, you know, will just run off to the, the, uh, the nearest catch basin. So we do have some type of a redundancy 
in our design, just in case, you know, we have this with you know, heavy rainfall, you know, we, we're not expecting the water to sit there and pond, it will run off. What doesn't infiltrate, it's gonna run off the next catch basin. So for street lighting, we are still in discussion with the town as to, you know, the type of um, lighting that we install in, in, in the median. But some of the things we started looking at is, you know, maybe a decorative style lighting that's shown on the left or your standard harbor head style lights. So we'll work with the town to figure out what is the best look for this corridor. And, and the goal is to really make, you know, this project really um, shine in the end when it's done. So as to the next steps, um, we're looking to provide um, a preliminary engineer submission to um, the state. Um, actually not a state, but the, the um, WACROG, which oversees the, the fund for this project. Um, that will be on February 19th of this year. We're looking at a semi-final engineering submission uh, near the end of uh, April. And then uh, for the final engineering submission, sometime we're thinking in June, near the end of June. And then we expect some approval from the DOT around July and then a water project in 2021, um, September of 2021. I just want to note here that this is a tentative schedule and you know we, you know what i said to derek is that our goal as the designers is to really um expedite the schedule and really as much as we can push these dates up that we're not you know so our job is to be aggressive in terms of getting these plans done so we can get um this project started this year so that concludes uh, my um, presentation and derek Unless you have something else, we can open it up for questioning. You know, if they have any concerns or questions, we're you know we'll be happy to take them now. One option. Uh, so, if you want to, if you want to say something, there is a uh, option under reactions where you can raise your hand. If you do that, I'd be able to see that you're looking to speak, and I can call on you. Otherwise, you're welcome to enter something into the chat box, and uh, we can answer. Okay, everyone's pretty quiet. So if uh, if you have something to say, you want to just unmute and go ahead. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, John Fonfair here, Derek. A um, couple of questions. One is um, with respect to the bus layover area. Um, it is a disaster where they lay over right now, and you've obtained a lot of money here, and I just wondered. Do the buses have to be on Wolcott Hill? There's a huge parking area, much of which does not get used currently. Um, that is um, adjacent, I guess, adjacent to the Department of Labor building and adjacent to the, um, to the park and ride area. I just wonder if that's a possibility instead of damaging um, this brand new road that you've worked so hard to get funding for and the town has worked so hard to get funding for. Um, and uh, if that if that would be an option, that's number one. Okay, uh, so with respect to that, uh, you know, we can talk with CT Transit about that option. Uh, I know they do utilize some of the state property for turning the buses around. Um, you know, being state property, I guess it'd have to be some uh, approval by the state to allow them to do that if that was an option on their end. So that's something we could discuss with them. Yeah, if you, if you, I'm sure you have, anyone's looked at that area, it is, it's got, um, you know, uh, whether it's oil or whatever that is left by the buses, uh, the buses are very heavy. They, they damage the, um, the road considerably. And if you can't, if there isn't an alternative to where they would, and they just sit there, they just sit there. It could be, I don't know if it could be 15 minutes, half an hour. I don't know how long they sit there, but that's essentially what happens. I live, I live on Monoe street, which is two streets in into Hartford. And so I travel this road all the time and uh, I see, I mean, the bus, they're not a problem in terms of, uh, traffic or whatever it's just that they're unsightly in terms of the what they do to the road i know the road is 
very old and obviously that's why this is happening, but um, uh, this work is going to be done, but I would hope that we could explore some option uh, in terms of where they, they sit for that period of time before. I, I don't know if it's because they're waiting for the schedule to catch up or what the reason is that they sit there, but they do. My other... Um, uh, sorry, Derek, if you want to cut in for a second. I'm Josh Rickman. I'm the SC General Manager for Planning and Marketing at CP Transit. Um, and with us, uh, as well as... Uh, Brian Siegel, uh, the Director of Planning and Scheduling for CT Transit, and Brian McLaughlin, who was our uh, System Planning Administrator in, in the Hartford region. Um, so just, you know, I want to introduce ourselves. You know, we, we do appreciate being part of this process. Um, just a little bit about our Route 47. That's the bus that's operating down this corridor. Um, you know, it starts at downtown Hartford. We go down Franklin Avenue, then Wolfcott Hill. And at that point, we branch off uh, to either the Berlin Turnpike or over to Rocky, Rocky Hill itself. Um, one thing I did hear you talk about was kind of some of the, uh, the ruts in the road that we sometimes leave. Um, and I know Brian uh, McLaughlin and Brian Siegel did some review on this. And in some of the other areas, we see these longer layovers or some, some of these spots where we're parked more regularly. We do sometimes use the concrete, you know, at least for where the bus tires would sit, which sometimes would help mitigate some of those uh, ruts in the road. Right. Um, in terms of the layover, um, something that we are experiencing, you know, largely because of COVID, and this might be exasperated because of COVID, um, you know, we've, uh, you know, usually the 47 route is one of our heavily, heaviest used buses within the Hartford region. Um, but, you know, we have not you know, been able to retime all of our routes because of the lower traffic volume along the corridors. Um, and that's a significant effort for the, you know, 100 bus routes we operate. Um, so I, I would, uh, you know, if we have specific questions, we, we can follow up. Um, but, Certainly, I think Brian Siegel and Brian McLaughlin can elaborate a little more on the, the specific operational issues if, if we're interested. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the buses being there. It's it's that because we have this fairly large area that most of which gets is underutilized that is adjacent to this area, is wondering if that uh, option isn't uh, possible for your for your drivers to use. They'd still be visible. Yeah. Well yeah, we'll, 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 have, we'll have to take a look at that. I mean, typically speaking, we try to stay, you know, we, we try to deviate off the main roads, turning left or right at unsignalized locations. I, I'd have to review the entire, you know, scenario there, but that might not be feasible. Um, but we, we can certainly take a look at that. Um, we just, we do try to stay on, on the main roads as this bus is continuing, you know, down Wolcott Hill, you know, north, north or south. Thank you. Uh, my other question, uh, Derek, is with respect to the not a question, but just to give you my my view on the lighting. Uh, as I've said to you when we discussed it, and I think I've spoken to the town manager about this previously, that the north end of town doesn't get a lot of attention. It's older. Um, uh, housing stock is older. Infrastructure is older. And um, I thought that, uh, and, and Tony and I have spoken about this for a few years now of trying to do something a, uh, and when Tony was on council, he was very helpful in trying to identify some things that we could do in the North End that would send a message to folks that, you know, we recognize you and uh, we know you're here. And this was an opportunity when I learned about the road being repaved that, uh, that hopefully aesthetically, this, this can be a positive to the community and, and whatever is design is chosen, that it enhances it not just for a lighting from a lighting perspective, and actually that's some rather small portion of it uh, or, or consideration. It's more about the visualization, as Bill said, uh, making it making it a positive addition to the community. So I hope that as the design folks uh, go forward with this, that they keep that at uh, front of mind. Yeah, certainly uh, I agree, and that's something you know we've been discussing as part of the project. So. Um, you know share your sentiment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Derek, Tom Mazzarella, if I could ask a question. Sure, Tom. The, um, <coughs> I couldn't tell exactly where 
the project starts, is it at the Jordan Lane intersection or north of the intersection? You know, are we going to put any kind of crosswalk uh, striping at Jordan Lane? Uh, Bill, you can verify. I, I think the project is looking to start just north of the crosswalk, uh, across Walker Hill Road on the uh, north side of the intersection, correct? That's correct. I, there's that recently completed DOT project, so we're just starting just north of that limits. And there's already a crosswalk, I think, in place at that location. Okay. That's pretty heavily trafficked pedestrian crosswalk there. Um, people walking from the bus up towards the uh, labor department and so on. Just want to make sure that that's adequate. Okay. Yeah, we could. We'll double check, but I, yeah, yes, we'll, yes, we will, Tom, just to make sure. Thank you. Anyone else wish to ask any questions or offer some comments? Uh, hi, folks. This is Matt Stanko. Um, I didn't see a hand raise emoji. It was just react other reactions. So I okay. hope I'm not interrupting. Um, but I just wanted to comment. I, I've lived on this section of Walcott Hill Road um, for quite a while. And uh, I have noticed over the years that I've been here that this, this road was always in bad condition. And it's something that was always disappointing to me. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased to see that this, uh, this project is underway. And I, I very much look forward to seeing its completion. Um, and I think it will definitely add to our community and the value of the community here. I also wanted to comment, um, I know there's a, even, a, was uh, another comment about the lighting there. Um, this is kind of the main road that a lot of people use to drive into Weathersfield. And it's sort of the road that welcomes them into Weathersfield. And I used to always think, you know, it's such a shame that it's in such a bad condition because they're coming into this town and, and they're not seeing that, you know, beautiful welcome. And even something minor like lighting, decorative lighting could add to, um, to the look of of um, of this roadway, so just something to consider there. I I personally know I'm not affected by what kind of lighting it is, but it's just more of an appearance thing. But yeah, overall, just very pleased to see that this project's underway. I think the bike lanes are are, are beautiful addition as well. And uh, personally, I I'm not too affected by the parking on the on the road there because it was dangerous to park there anyway. So. I just want to say uh, thank you to all that are involved and help get this uh, get this going because this is a very good addition to our community. Matt. I've got some comments for you if now is a good time. Sure. Hey, Kevin. Hi there. Uh, Kevin Sullivan, resident of Weathersfield, 79 Wright Road. Um, I'd like to start with the pavement, uh, agreed that it's, it's really bad shape right now. Pretty obvious. Um, I thought I had understood that the underlying cause was shifting of concrete plates that are like the foundation for the road and with a mill and overlay would that, uh, fix the concrete shifting problem, um, well enough, uh, such that. Uh, you know, the, the surface pavement isn't going to deteriorate and rut and things like that too quickly. Derek, you want to take, you want me to take that or you want to start? Oh, uh, why, why don't you just explain, Bill, what your, you know, your field investigation showed and what you're, what you're thinking at this point. Um, you know, this is very early in design, but what we're thinking as far as the best remedy. Sure. So, <clears throat> As part of the um, our evaluation, we went out there, we, we dug some holes, we call them testing, but they're essentially test holes that we dug that penetrates the concrete all the way, uh, not the asphalt, the concrete, all the way down to the base to see exactly what is going on with this road. And one of the discoveries was that 
there is actually clay beneath this roadway. So, you know, based on that extrapolation, the reason, more than likely the reason there's a concrete base on that road is because of the clay underneath, right? Otherwise, you essentially have a road that's in a bathtub where clay just doesn't drain um, properly. So as part of our evaluation, we're thinking, is it, should, what's, you know, should we take that, that concrete base out or, and what would that do if we do that, right? We, we probably end up in a pretty worse situation if we do that. So what we're thinking is that if we expose that concrete base and then any cracks or, or joints in that um, concrete base, we could actually, you know, seal those joints, which would essentially reduce or um, delay any cracking in the, you know, any future cracking of that pavement or deterioration of the pavement. So, because one thing, if you, you know, you remove that concrete um, base, you could essentially end up with a, in a little more difficult situation where, you know, you have a road that's sitting in clay, which is never a good thing for drainage. So, we're in the early process of um, really figuring out what is the best treatment. We're leaning towards Milanova at this point. I think we still want to do some more digging, exactly based on your concern that we want a pavement that will last for a while and you know not just a band aid. Thank you, and and I'd like to back up. Uh, and first say, I think overall, I, I'm very impressed with the project. I think it includes a lot of wonderful improvements, the consideration for stormwater runoff, the bike lanes, uh, the uh, lane narrowing, all of that will help with uh, traffic calming. So that's very much appreciated. Um, a couple of things I'd like to see fine tuned with the, des with the design. At the far left of the diagram where the uh, north edge of the Jordan Lane intersection, the, um, how to say this, there's a, a dark area, like a hatchard area that represents the, um, yeah, somebody's pointing at it now. Yeah, that's right, the big papers, yeah. Yeah, um, it uh, kind of comes in at an angle from the far left so that it, it narrows over to the bike lane. I would strongly suggest that the shape of that uh, fill in that whole area. So there's actually like a, a blocking of people coming northbound from across the intersection. Because right now, uh, and uh, just to kind of let you know my perspective, I'm a bicycle commuter uh, year round and I use uh, that section of Wolcott Hill Road uh, a lot. So I'm very familiar with traffic patterns there. A couple of times I've almost gotten hit when I'm using the lane, which is actually the left lane northbound uh, that goes straight across the intersection. The right lane going northbound is right turn only. A couple of times coming across the intersection, I've almost gotten hit because people try to pass me on the right because they can't. They don't, they don't obey the right turn only they continue straight across the intersection and come up on my right side. So that's that's a cyclist problem. I, I recognize that. So I'm not trying to create, you know, make a problem for you. But basically with a right turn only lane, there shouldn't be anyone going, a need for anyone to use. Yeah, there you go. So this is, a, all right, so this is just south here, okay. Just trying to find a good view so everyone can see it. Don't yeah, so the, here, but. at that, <clears throat> yeah, so. Here we go. So we're looking, this is north, so this is unoriented, myself north. That's, so that's is, looking that's south right north. now. That's, that's looking, looking north here. So we're, yeah, north, so you're right. Yeah, the war is hard for us. Right now there's yeah. two lanes there. The right lane should be blocked because, or or it should have a, a bike lane only there. It should be narrowed. So with two lanes there, it allows people to go straight across the intersection in a north direction when they were required by law to take a right-hand turn because they were in a right turn only lane. Um, so they shouldn't be allowed, they shouldn't have the opportunity to go across the intersection and use that right-hand lane. Because there's space for them this to do it a, now. 
Right, so this is us in Jordan Lane. We're gonna we'll make a right on the Walcott Hill through here in North. So, yeah, I, I got what you're saying, uh, so we'll, we'll look at that. That's going right turn going south. That would be making you go south. That's on uh, right, Jordan but, Lane. So I'm, Bill, I'm right, sorry, but, when, I was, yeah. um, when I was saying Jordan Lane, I apologize, I wasn't being clear. I meant the Jordan Lane intersection. The travel I'm talking about is strictly on Walcott Hill Road. Mm -hmm. So it would be northbound on Walcott Hill Road. Right now we're looking at eastbound on Jordan Lane. Okay. Right, so this, right, so this is us looking, let me just turn That's, around. You can see us, right, so this is southbound, right? Is, I, yeah, so this is okay. us making a ride from Jordan Lane through here and making our way north on Walcott Hill. Yeah, got your point. Yeah, actually Great. I'm talking about coming northbound from, we're looking southbound right now Correct. But we're in the northbound lane. We're looking to the south. If I were coming at us in this picture, um, people should not be driving in the in the right-hand lane because they should right take they should have taken a turn on the other side of the intersection for a right turn only. Bill, just uh, scroll back to where you actually started, which is straight ahead past the bridge through the intersection, mm -hmm. and then turn around because he's talking about coming north through the intersection. Yep, northbound over right, so uh, like right, you were right? standing in front of the liquor store on the corner. No, off okay. of Jordan and go back onto Wolka Hill to your left. Sorry, I hope I'm not getting into too much minutiae here. No, it's fine. We, we're, that's what we're here for, right? To get it right, so. We're looking over here, Derek? No, I'm looking for you to go on the other down. side, on the south side of the Jordan Lane intersection, straight straight ahead from where you are. Do you want to go across north the intersection, Straight across the intersection. Yeah, over here. This, these are the lanes he's talking about. Why don't you go back a little more and turn and face. Oh, I'm sorry, hold it right here. No. No. Face northbound. Look right. No, to turn, pan to your right. Northbound here. No, you, this, uh, is on, this is westbound. Oh, westbound on Jordan, so. This so is us, right, so draw, let me let me start. Sorry about that, guys. Let me let me start back here. Right. So this is us on Walker Hill. Right. So we're going south. No, you're 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 going right through uh, here. You're on Jordan Lane. Yeah. Turn left to keep going left, Bill. I'm on Walker Hill right here. Yeah. Go go straight straight. Don't go. Forget the yeah. lane on the left. Go straight through the intersection. And I'll back up. This way. No, oh, here. If you go in front of the package, store, face northbound, Bill. Go to the stop sign. Okay. No, you're you're on you're on the other side of the you're you already go back to the other side of uh, of the okay. bridge. Hey, Bill, I'll, I'll bring up okay, my screen. Okay. I, I know where we are. Hold on a second. <clears throat> the liquor store is right here, right? Oh, okay, there you go. Everyone. <clears throat> See this now. This this is looking yeah. northbound on Walker Hill Road, but we are south of the Jordan Lane intersection. So our right. starting on the north side of the intersection, underneath the bridge. What Kevin's referring to are, are these lanes. We recently, well, in the last two or three years, restriped this. So we have a right turn only lane to the stop sign, and then we have a straight through and left turn lane at the stop sign. What he's indicating is when he's in this straight through lane because there is two lanes on the other side and this historically did not have right turn only, some people drive straight through. So you got two lanes going straight instead of taking the right turn. So when we get over on this side and we're coming into our project, he, he, I think he just wants to, he wants to just make sure we're narrowing this up so that a vehicle that can't come across the intersection like they can now. Right. Which, got it. Got I, think it. I think he's just talking about how we align the curve here at the exactly. end. Exactly, exactly. Understood. It would also uh, shorten the crosswalk distance there too. Yes, and that, and I'll I'll stop sharing, Bill. If you want to bring up the plan, we can go back and look at what okay. you're showing. Let's grab the presentation. Which is through here, right? Yeah. So Kevin, it's hard to see, but this 
this black hatched area is new island that is going to push out. Okay. So, uh, I mean, the reason why it's the way it's left is there's a catch basin down there and we were trying to leave the basin where it is. Ah. So that lane is there, but it's really only there right at the intersection and then you lose it right away because you're right. going right into this. Correct. So, you know, we're trying to keep it within the limits and, and, and limit the impact here at the intersection, but you know, that was why. So it really isn't a full lane here. You're going to have one lane going north. If you're coming across, if you don't take the right turn and you're coming into this, you're going to be necking down right into this bike lane and this hatched area that you'll be able to see across the intersection. Okay. I think that's an improvement. I'd, I'd still think I'd like, I'd like people always uh, uh, try to challenge what engineers do. Uh, that's our job as humans. So they're going to say, no, I can, I can get past that bicyclist on the right because I got a little room there. Uh, so if there's a way to uh, fill in that area uh, at least a little bit more and not block the catch basin, I would think that could be done a little bit. Uh, that would be helpful, I think. Yeah, we could look at that. You know, yep. we, can, look at that. we have options with, with that, so we'll take a look. Cool. Uh, the other thing I was going to suggest is taking a look at the the slip lane there, if possible, uh, slip lanes uh, tend to encourage people to go through stop signs that are at the end of the slip lane. Um, and they also don't have very good visibility for the driver because they have to kind of look over their shoulder. Uh, so I always like to see uh, slip lanes be more as perpendicular as possible, intersecting the road that they uh, join with. So I was hoping with this project that um, with the bump, the bumping out that's occurring, that that um, uh, the bump outs could be shaped to try to get as close to a perpendicular intersection with Wilcott Hill Road as we can. Uh, it would give drivers better visibility because they wouldn't have to look over their shoulder. They'd just look to their left like they would if they were at an intersection. And it would encourage people to uh, pay attention to the stop sign more because there wouldn't be as much of an invitation to just go right onto Wolcott Hill Road. So I hope that made sense, trying to kind of straighten out the, 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 the slip line where it, where it intersects. And, and probably the biggest change uh, from that diagram would be to uh, expand the, the uh, right-hand side of that uh, intersection where the slip lane hits uh, and it joins Wolcott Hill Road. Right now it's coming in at an angle that kind of cuts off the, the yeah, right there. Um, if that were bumped out, it would discourage people from blowing through the stop sign. I've had uh, officers working at the corrections department blow through that stop sign and almost hit me. They wouldn't even talk to me about it. Anyway, that's a, a pet peeve. Okay. And uh, when we were talking about um, buses parking, uh, I think that's going to become a bigger issue in the sense that uh, the roads being narrowed. So any buses parked are, are going to tend to block some of the road to a degree. Um, I'll very often see at least one bus parked and commonly see two parked. Uh, I don't have an objection to buses parked. Um, it's just with the narrowed road, there's going to be less space for everybody. So um, I like the pull-off that's designed in there where the cursor is. I, I'm wondering if that could be expanded to allow buses to kind of do the parking that they do. Otherwise, I think the pull-off that's designed there now isn't going to uh, accommodate all of the buses that are parked. The pull-off there that the way it's designed looked like it would, it would accommodate the bus that's pulling over to pick up passengers and uh, there wouldn't be enough space for buses to park. Well, we have, we have talked to CT Transit about that. Um, we could revisit it, but they, they had indicated that was the size they would want there. Uh, if I remember it, it holds two buses and on okay. their schedule, they felt that, that maybe was the most that was gonna be there at a the time. So, okay. um, you know, we can ensure with them that we're providing enough space, but that was discussed very early on.
And um, I really like the, the uh, stormwater improvements as well. Um, where the uh, road is narrowed on the uh, east side, the, lo the, the lower part of the diagram as we're looking at it, um, the catch basins are gonna be now off of the edge of the road, is that correct? Or no, they will the remain at the edge of the road. As you just, uh, I would say black dot or this black symbol here, that is a okay. catch basin at the edge of the road. I was a little surprised to see that. Uh, I thought maybe the catch basins would stay where they are and they would end up being kind of off the street and whatever uh, treatments, uh, uh, I'm not sure of the right word to use, whatever was being designed to catch water before it reached catch basin would be kind of part of the, the area around the catch basin that would be off, off of the road. I guess I was assuming that that it would be cheaper to leave the catch basin where it is because it's probably over some kind of piping that goes straight down, uh, that it would be cheaper to design a catch, a, a water catching slowing area um, rather than move the catch basin uh, to a new place. I don't know, I'm not sure if that made sense. Yeah, I see your point, I, I think. Um from what we're showing here, in terms of the actual moving the catch basin, um, if you can imagine an, an, imagine, an imaginary pipe connecting these two structures, so essentially adding a new, so this is the existing catch basin, it's right here, where we're converting that structure to a manhole at this location. Then you insert in a new structure at this location, right in line with that pipe. So okay. it's pretty straightforward to do that um, from a construction point of view. So it's not okay. that difficult there. Um, but it, you know, also one of the things that you know, as we look for, you know, look forward to incorporating what we call a biosweat or some sort of system here. You know, I think from a practical perspective, we have to be aware that in, you know, in every rainstorm, right, this water is going to come gushing through here. So we want to make sure, we all, you know, what doesn't get treated or picked up here, we we need to pick that up in that structure, you know, during a heavy rain event too. So that's why we it's usually ideal to have the structure right along the gutter line. That purpose. So, some of the concern with that too, Kevin, is when the structures are located off of the curb line in the winter time when they're plowing, they, it's really best if they can go over the frame itself. It helps everything melt and drain off the road quicker. When they're off the road, they're really packing snow now on top of it. That gets icy, then water, we get some rain, the water can't get to it. So I mean, it would be a standard process to do what VHB is proposing to put, to put them, move them to the curb line or install new ones. Uh, is your concern that the, them being in the bike lane as far as grates, or are you just talking about how we're, you know, how we're handling the drainage? No, yeah. it was, it was, I appreciate you asking. It, it was just a drainage uh, issue. And, and you're right. I honestly wondered whether leaving them off of the curb uh, would create, you know, that they might fill in with sand or debris. It would, might create maintenance issues. Um, so I, I appreciate you answering that question. Thank you. That's that's all I've got right now. Okay, thank you. Anyone Hi, else? this is Matt Stanko again. I just I, this picture actually reminded me of something I wanted to mention. Uh, I actually live right there at twenty three. So, looking at this picture, when when there was two lanes on the uh, northbound side when I would be going to turn basically almost like a U-turn to get into my driveway. And I've even seen this with some of the other residents who live uh, nearby and those turning onto those streets like Reed and Judd, um, we tend to have to stop to make that turn. And especially when it's a busier day, there's some traffic coming uh, southbound. We have to wait there for, for a while before the road becomes clear enough for us to make that turn. Now, when it used to be two lanes, cars used to be able to kind of go into that right-hand lane and go around us. Uh, and now that it's turning into one lane, I'm wondering, is this going to cause some traffic buildup behind us as we're waiting there to make that turn? And I mean, I try to kind of almost make like a half a turn and 
get into that space in the median there that and where the island is to kind of allow people to pass anyway. But I've had some really close calls with people swerving out of the way when they realize I'm, I'm making a turn here and, and even times when they barely hit the corner of my car. Um, so that's just something to note in, in this. And, and in, what it might cause too is, is if somebody's stopping to make a turn, let's say onto redrive, and there's a bicyclist on that bike lane and somebody's swerving to get around me, they might not notice that there's a bicyclist there and run into somebody. So it's just something to note. I don't, I don't think that's really a problem that exists going southbound because there's no properties to turn onto on, uh, on, the, on the right side of the road. But when you're going northbound and you're turning into those properties or, or those adjacent roads, I think you'll see that a lot more, that kind of risk. So I don't know if it's like a pull-off that would be created there or something, but I just anticipate that it'll be it'll contribute to a dangerous situation not having the two lanes. Okay, that's something uh, that's something we could look at. Uh, we we had talked about it um, as you said. We expected people to kind of pull into that median area, and we had some extra space with the buffer and the bike lane. Um, however, if there's enough traffic going through on the southbound side. Yeah, I could see the northbound backing up for the residents up those roads. So that's something we could look at. Um, you know, I'll talk with VHB. Maybe we could do some kind of a left turn lane in the islands at, at those locations or the ones that are gonna be the worst, um, but we'll, we'll check it out. Right, like a cut in into the island or something, even, even just a smaller one, just so somebody can get around and not have to swerve into the bike lane or anything like that, yeah. Understand, thank you. I'll add to that in response as a cyclist. Um, I appreciate the concern about cyclists, but I don't think it'll be a problem for us. Uh, I've seen uh, people like yourself uh, making those kinds of maneuvers. And I think probably the biggest problem is the speed of the traffic. And one of the biggest things that's happening here with this project is the road is being narrowed and the lanes are being striped at 11 feet, which, which is less than what's out there now. And that'll help slow the traffic. And that's probably the biggest thing that'll, that'll help the uh, maneuvers that need to be made to get into your driveway. Yeah, that's one of the intents of the, of the project with the narrower lanes is to act as a traffic calming measure. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll talk about it some more and look at that as we go forward. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kevin. Anyone else like to ask a question or offer some comments? Hi there. Um, my name is Chandra Rivers and I live on Stillman Road right off here. So I just wanted to comment that I, I like the overall plan. I really like the bike lanes. Hi, Kevin. Um, and, um, and I'm also happy to see the um, care taken to the runoff and the, the low impact areas. Um, I think my, just, just wanted to share that I, I'm, I'm also pleased to see that there's um, a project in the works for this stretch of, of the entrance to Weathersfield. Thank you. Thank you for that. Does anyone else like to jump in? I've got one more if that's okay. Hey, Kevin. So for the um, Victoria Road intersection, I, if I understood correctly, it, it looked like that intersection is kind of part of the project or at least semi because of the uh, ramps that are being installed. Those are good. And I'm, I'm glad to see that um, walk lights will be uh, installed there. Right now, I think the buttons only activate the street light, something like that. Um, I wondered with the, the left turn only lane in Weathersfield going north, 
and a little bit off of the photo there, there's a left turn only lane coming south out of Hartford. Uh, those uh, are sometimes used by drivers as an extra lane to go straight. Uh, and I've seen in some in, uh, some intersections now being uh, a traffic calming element being added is some kind of a planter or mini rotary thing to kind of block the very center of the intersection so people can't blow across it going straight. I hope I described that so it makes sense. Uh, if that if that made sense, has there been any thought to doing that? That that hasn't been discussed as part of this project. Um, you know, that's something that actually our pavement reconstruction as it is now uh, stops on the south side of that intersection. And that is Hartford. So that'd be something that, you know, they'd have to weigh in on. Um, I, my, I guess my initial thought with that is there might be some concerns with turning movements uh, to the different roads if we have that type of, I don't know if the intersection is large enough for that. Um, so that's, that's something we haven't talked about. That's that, that type of situation of people driving straight through the left turn lane is is a hard one to manage. True, it, it's hard to get people to do uh, to drive intelligently and safely. Uh, but if you've got a a uh, chunk of concrete in the middle of the intersection, it makes it a lot easier to convince people. I can check with uh, Sandy Fry and see if. Uh, they have any thoughts on it. Thank you. Eric, um, what people do, I don't know if Kevin was referring to going northbound into Hartford, but what people do all the time is they stay in the left lane. And it's not a lot of people, but they do stay in the left lane and go right through, even though the left lane is uh, a left lane turn, left turn lane into for Victoria Road. But what you've done with the um, with the narrowing of the road, that's going to discourage that quite a bit. Um, and uh, because everybody will be in, well, if they're not driving in the bike lane, uh, everybody will be in one lane. And the fact that that narrows there even more will discourage that second, you know, having a parallel driver. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's going to eliminate that issue. Thank you. Yeah, the road, the road approaching the intersection going northbound will be narrower in that direction than it is now. Yeah. That's true. That will help. Thank you. Hey, Derek, I just wanted to, this is Josh, you and I, I wanted to address a comment that was in the chat box about uh, the catch basin grates. There are two styles that DOT has, the, the type A and the type B. These will be type A catch basin grates that are bike, ped, bike friendly. Uh, the type Bs are usually used on limited access highways. So just wanted to address that question. And, and on behalf of Bill and VHB, just say thanks for all the public feedback. This is really the point of this whole thing. So we really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, you drew my attention to the chat box, which I hadn't looked at in a while. Um, so we did have some other questions. Um, Kevin uh, had taught, discussed our, I think we discussed with Kevin Sullivan, the expanding pullover space on Walker Hill Road with the, uh, with the bus pull-offs. Um, Nancy G has asked any possibility of putting yellow flashlights at the crosswalks. Most cars don't stop for pedestrians. Yeah, that, that comes up. From time to time, um, I I'm not sure answering right now if if the traffic and pedestrian volumes are high enough to warrant <clears throat> putting in that type of infrastructure. Um, you know that's something we could we could look at a little bit more. But my guess is that that's not likely we'd be doing that, particularly not at every intersection. Unless you can offer anything, Bill. I agree, Derek. Uh, I think as a starter, we've actually reduced the crossing um, areas distance and by us providing that refuge island, I think that's certainly an improvement. But like you said, we could look into um, additional lighting, but just off the top of my head, I would think, you know, we wouldn't install lights 
flashing lights at these crosswalks, uh, but we'll, we could do a further evaluation of that. To follow up on that, um, the bump out on the right side of the uh, picture, <clears throat> excuse me, on the northeast corner of Victoria there, that will help by itself because that uh, shortens that crosswalk quite a bit from what it is right now, probably a good six or eight feet shorter. Um, another thing, I don't know, um, oh, okay. Different, uh, different intersections, sorry. Oh, yeah. You said Victoria, sorry, I was going to Victoria. Okay, it's um, right here, Reed, right at Reed. Uh, no, I, well, that one's at Reed. I thought the, uh, oh, is it, was the person talking about crosswalk lights at Reed? I'm sorry. I thought they were talking about Victoria. Um, so on, on signalized intersections, that's- Okay, so they were talking we're about Reed. Yeah, that bump out at Reed there doesn't exist right now. So that'll be helpful. Um, so I guess my question becomes, what about Victoria? Um, I thought Victoria was going to be bumped, bumped out more than it is. I think it could be on the northeast corner there if it were bumped out as much as it is in Weathersfield. Uh, I suppose that's a bit off project. But um, the bump out could occupy the space that's now uh, sort of like a shoulder area for parking. Right, right. You're, you're talking about in here, right? This, this, yeah. My mom's going to run to run here. That is, that is a very wide intersection. And I know there's at least one blind walker, uh, I believe two that live nearby that use the intersection a lot. Um, and that is a pretty wide intersection. So a, a more of a bump out would be very helpful there. I would think Derek, right, that would be a consideration for the city of Hartford. Correct. Hartford yeah, we did talk to project. Them. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else like to offer anything? Okay, going once, going twice. All right. Well, if anybody uh, you know comes has anything <clears throat> they'd like to add after the meeting, you know, feel free to give me a call um, or reach out to me by email. And uh, I thank you for attending tonight. I think it was very productive and you got some really good feedback that we'll, uh, we'll take into account as we go forward with the project. Thank you, Derek. Will this be posted on the website? The meeting, yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Night. Have a good night, Thanks. everyone. All right. Thank, thank you. you.